But today, the 30-year-old American broke his silence. WikiLeaks issued a statement attributed to him slamming America. After promising not to do so, he wrote, President Obama ordered his vice president to pressure the leaders of nations from which I have requested protection to deny my asylum petitions. Let's get a, a different perspective on it, um, perspective from a certain angle. We're going to talk to Janice Sharp, whose son, Gary McKinnon, as we reported comprehensively, was wanted by US authorities over hacking allegations into government computers. Janice, uh, thanks for joining us. Good afternoon to you. Pleasure. Good afternoon. Um, I'm sure viewers will be interested in, in what you have to say on this. Do you sympathise with Edward Snowden at all? Well, I think the thing is that America was always a fierce def defender of asylum and recently uh, gave asylum to a Chinese man who they took into America. So if they really are putting pressure on other countries to stop asylum taking place, it will affect asylum, which has had respect from most countries in the world, developed countries. So that would be a sad thing to see, that if one country that's more powerful could stop this happening. And also, I heard you talking about the economic implications. Uh, I heard Switzerland saying that it, economic espionage was involved. Now, how can you have trade talks if people are afraid that economic espionage has taken place? Because America has always been a very competitive nation, as are we, I suppose. And if they're having the secrets of all our banks and, and, and all of our com companies, it just doesn't seem right. It puts you in a very difficult position. Uh, that's uh, part of my perspective. And also with regard to Edward Snowden, um, a political offence has never been extraditable. That was the one thing that you could argue against the extradition on, was a political offence. And he is obviously someone that hasn't done this for maliciousness or for money, but it's through conscience, whether he's right or wrong. And if he's wrong, if he was given a, a year or two or whatever sort of sentence was appropriate. But the thing is, there's talks of, of um, huge sentences and they even have the death penalty there. So it, it becomes so extreme. I mean, sometimes people are threatened with bigger sentences than war criminals in The Hague who are given 25 years for murdering thousands and thousands of people. So it seems very disproportionate. The American side, um, and you know, we have it in different forms, Janice, is basically that he's committed a very serious act which has endangered national security. Um, and you know, you're, you're familiar with the allegations. Are, are you saying that from, what, from your perspective, there was justification for what he did? Do you sympathize with what he did and in that sense think that he deserves more protection? I think that he meant well, and uh, you're talking about terrorism. I mean, France and Germany are not terrorists. So, I mean, how can uh, they say it's a, a sort of to prevent terrorism, but then target other countries, friendly countries like France and Germany? That, that just doesn't uh, fit in with it at all. I suppose, if you, again, if you listen to the Americans, they say if everybody did this, you know, there'd be turmoil and chaos everywhere. Well, as I say, France and Germany aren't terrorists, and if you are friends, you don't expect... I mean, if your neighbour was spying on you or your neighbour was listening to your conversations or emails, it would seem ludicrous. And if you're having conversations uh, to take the important decisions economically or politically and your friend has been spying and listening, for what reason? You know, if you're their friend, for what reason? How can you have honest, straightforward talks if one side is doing that to another? It just... It's gone mad. The world's gone mad with just, all this sort of uh, paranoia, really. Uh, uh, just a, uh, a very brief uh, final question, if I may, Janice. Lots of people obviously will remember your campaign on behalf of your son, Gary. Do you see any parallels in the sense that, you know, you led what was ultimately a successful campaign to prevent that extradition? Um, yeah. He's part of, clearly, some kind of campaign too, if you look at WikiLeaks and all the rest of it. Yeah. Do you see any parallels? There are some. They both seem very straightforward. And I think there was no malicious intent. Uh, I think that's the thing. I think he thought he was doing good. And I think he thought what was happening was wrong. And although he worked for the CIA, he was actually uh, taken in it like a temp, if you like, for so many people to have such high security clearance is maybe not really such a good idea. Janice Sharp, once again, good of you to come in. Thanks very much. Thank you.